Welcome back everyone, it's Mindy Egan and I'm excited to share with you the exclusive Concord and Ninth Everyday Bouquet Turnabout Toolkit. I will show you the contents of the kit and then I'm also going to be creating three cards to show you how you can use this amazing toolkit. So starting off, we're going to take a look at the box and the contents of the kit. This is how you will receive your box. There's a sleeve on the front that you can just slip off. And then the box opens up with these wonderful messages from Concord and Ninth. You flip the flap open and you can pull out the contents of the box from this little pocket. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that I did go ahead and already uh, label my stamp and die. So that will look a little bit different than what you will get in the kit. But I just had these ready so they were packaged up the way I like to have them. So the first thing in here is you're going to receive some adhesive. This is removable adhesive. This is going to be used with the turnabout kit so that you can easily take the adhesive off of your paper. So that's a great tool to have. You also have an adhesive remover. So I'm just taking out the contents of this since I hadn't opened those up just yet. Next up is we have the turnabout jig. This is amazing. You will not need to be marking up your stamps anymore or making any X's using markers, rulers. This is going to help you so much when you are creating with the turnabout stamp sets. And I will show you how to use this later on in the video. But you can see here they are numbered in the corner. So as you turn one, two, three, and four, that'll help you when you're stamping out your patterns. There's the X in the middle that's perforated. And then there's also some uh, like registration points. So you can either have your card here for a horizontal or vertical design, depending what you're looking for. And I will show you how to use that as well. And this is out of um, like a plastic type material, so very easy to clean off. Next up in the kit is you're also getting some cardstock bases and envelopes. So I'm just removing those out and you can see here, these are really great envelopes. We have four envelopes here, so you should have no excuses for not mailing out your beautiful cards. And then you also have here four pre-scored card bases for your cards. Next is the stamp set. You can see mine is well loved already. I've been playing with it a lot since I got this kit. So it has a few sentiments on here. It also has your turnabout, your mini turnabout stamp at the top. And you can see I already have mine packaged. So yours is going to come um, in the plastic sleeve like you normally would get your stamps. This is very important. These are going to start being sold at Concord and Ninth to help you uh, align your turnabout stamp set. And then this is on the back of their packaging, and I always save these inserts. And this just shows you how it stamps out for each step. And this is the coordinating die. Now, you will not get it on a magnet sheet. This is just how I store my items. But you have a banner, you have some foliage here, flower, you have a thanks word die, which I'll be using, and then some shapes. So that is a look at the kit. This is exclusive to Concord and Ninth. These will not be sold separately in the store, so get it while you can, because it is while supplies last. So next up, we'll be taking a look at different cards that I've created. The first card here that I'm going to walk you through is a basic turnabout stamp, where we're centering it right in the middle of the card. So the first thing we'll need to do is get out your stamp set and also that acetate sheet that has the design on it. I'm going to remove my mini turnabout from my sheet. And I'm just going to pull out this insert so you can see it a little better um, instead of being on my black mat here. So I'm just getting out the insert to line this up. So you have that acetate sheet with the X through it. You want to make sure you have it where it says this side up. And then align your stamp with the images on that sheet. And just get over it, make sure everything matches up. You want it stamped side down. And so that is the first step in preparing, doing our turnabout. Next, I'm aligning the jig into the corner of my Misty, making sure that is front side up as well. And then using the X from the jig and match it up with the X 
on your stamp that you have attached to that acetate sheet. Close the lid of your MISTI, pick it up, and you can remove that transparency piece. And now we are all set to stamp. Next up, I'm going to be using a piece of Nina Solarite cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock. And I'm going to start out just in the vertical position. So on the back of my cardstock, I'm just adding some of that removable adhesive. And this is measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm lining up the corners of my card with those registration marks and then just pushing that down really well to make sure that it is stuck to my jig. We're going to move the entire thing when we start stamping. Next up, I'm going to be getting out my inks. So for my project today, I'm using inks from Gina K Designs. I will also have them listed across the screen as I use them. So I have Sea Glass, Blue Lagoon, Slate, and Moonlit Fog. The mini ink cubes do work really well when it's a mini um, turnabout stamp. The bigger ink pads I found do work better. So the first thing I do is I'm taking the slate ink pad and just inking up all of my images really well. And then I'll close the lid of my MISTI and just give that a good push down. And this is uh, step one, or this is our stamp one. You can see in the top right hand corner I have the one up there. You want to keep an eye on that. And I have learned to turn it right away. <laughs> so I'm just turning it to the right so I have the two up in the corner. If I don't turn it right away, I do tend to forget. So I just make sure I have that turned right away. I just turn it the once, have the two in the corner, clean off my image. And now I'm going to come in with sea glass. So I'm alternating between my shades. So I'm inking up with the sea glass. And then I'll close the lid of the MISTI. And I'll give this a really good, nice push down. The beauty of this is if, it, if I don't get a clean impression the first time because everything is stuck together and adhered down, I can always stamp it again. And then give it a turn so you have a three up in the top corner. And if you ever question if it's looking right, uh, check the back of the packaging that will show you how it's supposed to look at each step So that's always a really good idea to keep that Next is the moonlit fog So I'm going to go ahead ink up my image here I am keeping this in real time so that you can get a really good idea how this works I do speed it up further on in the video, but I just wanted you to see in real time here how this works so that is step three, turn it. So you have a four in the top corner and this will be our last one that we stamp. So I'll just clean that off and then I'm gonna come in with my blue lagoon. And I think this is a really beautiful, unique color combination and you really could do any color combination. I honestly, I sat and just played with a bunch of different ink colors and they all look just amazing. So I inked up my image with the blue lagoon, push down, and that is our complete image for our turnabout. So that is kind of a basic to start with. These are really easy. You could really do a lot of mass producing with this. So I'll go ahead, just clean off my stamp so it's ready for the next time. And then I can just pick that off since it is removable adhesive and I'm just kind of wiping off any that may have still been stuck to the jig. And then you can either use your finger to rub off that adhesive or take the adhesive remover and it comes right off. And there is our look at our image. So for my second card, we're going to take this up a notch and we're going to do this off center and add a little heat embossing. So because I am doing this in a different side of my card, I need to realign this, which is really quick. So as before, I'm lining that up with that transparency sheet, placing that on the jig, closing the lid of the MISTI, and my stamp set is ready. Now you can see I did kind of rotate my MISTI a little bit. I wanted to make sure I had enough room on the sides. So I did put some removable adhesive on the back of my cardstock. This is still the Nina... Uh, solar white 110 pound 
And right now I'm testing out where I want my image to be. I know I want it off on the left hand side and I want to make sure I have enough room for everything. So I'm just uh, testing that out by closing the lid, kind of looking where it would land. Once I'm happy with it, I can push that down really well so my cardstock is stuck to the jug. And then I can come in and I'm going to start stamping. And I'm using the exact same colors that I did in the first card. We're just going to take this up a notch at the end. So starting off with the slate, stamping that down. And that leaves a beautiful image starting off our turnabout. I'll clean that off. And you can see I have the one in the top right hand corner. I didn't turn it right away, but I'll catch it here in just a moment. So I am coming in with the sea glass ink and you can see I was starting to stamp and realized I didn't flip it. So that's why I've kind of learned to turn it right away. So now this cardstock will hang off the edge of the misty. That is okay. It doesn't hurt the cardstock any. You just want to make sure you're not having any extra ink on the door of your misty because that could transfer over. So you just want to be aware of that when you're stamping. Especially if you're using bigger ink pads, that tends to get on the door a little bit more. Well, me anyway, I do. I'm kind of a messy stamper. So uh, on to my third color, which is the Moonlit Fog. And I made sure to turn, so I have a three in that top corner. And it's okay that that cardstock is hanging off. So I'll turn, and I'm on number four. So I'm going to come in with that Blue Lagoon. Now once I'm done stamping with the Blue Lagoon, I'm not going to take this out of the Misty. I'm going to leave it right there with the number four up. So I'll stamp that down and that has our image off centered on our card. So off on the left hand side. I'm going to clean off my image because next I'm going to do a little heat embossing. So I'm going to clean that off, make sure that's dry. I let this sit for a few minutes to make sure that the ink was settled and dry on the cardstock. And I did prep it with an anti-static powder tool. And then I just kind of use a paintbrush to brush that over. That just helps make sure that none of the embossing powder is sticking where I don't want it to. And then I can ink up the image with the Versamark ink. This is a great embossing ink. It's nice and sticky. So our embossing powder will stick to it really well. And I'm stamping that right on top of that Blue Lagoon ink that I had just done. Once I have that stamped, I can remove this from the jig. And then I'm coming in with Wow Clear Sparkle Embossing Powder. And this is really gorgeous in person. Kind of hard to see in the pictures and on camera, but it really has a beautiful sparkle. Really brightens up that Blue Lagoon. And then I'm hitting that up with my heat tool. And I'll show you here, it just has a gorgeous sparkle to it. So I am putting these off on the side to finish towards the end. Now here is a closer look, if you can see all that sparkle on that Blue Lagoon. My next card is we're going to heat emboss the whole thing. And this comes out just gorgeous. You can, you can do this in any of the embossing colors. So once again, I'm aligning my... Uh, stamp up on that transparency, putting my jig back into my misty and lining up those X's. It's hard to see on camera, but you really do see it perfectly fine in person. So once my turnabout is ready, I can remove that transparency. And now I'm using some sea glass cardstock to do some stamping. So I do have the removable adhesive on the back to hold that down. And I just applied some uh, anti-static powder tool to my cardstock since I am doing a lot of the embossing I want to make sure the embossing powder is only sticking where my Versamark is going to be. And so watching my numbers in the top corner this is on number one in the top right. Now because Versamark is such a great sticky ink I can go ahead and just stamp all of these right away. It's going to stay sticky for a little while so I can just go through each turn and stamp all of these. And I'm just using a rag to help kind of push that down a little bit, making sure it has a really good impression from the ink. And now once this is done, I can take my cardstock off. I'll remove the adhesive later after I get everything done. 
So I'm just taking a piece of scratch paper to catch my, catch my embossing powder and I'm using the Brutus Monroe Sterling. This is a really gorgeous shiny silver. And I sprinkled that all over that and you can see this is going to be just a gorgeous centerpiece, especially on colored cardstock. So dig out any other type of colors that you have was, will look just beautiful on it. And that silver just has a great shine. So once that is dried, I'm going to just kind of wipe over that with a Swiffer cloth to take off any excess powder that might have been there from my anti-static powder tool. And we'll move on to the next step. We are going to be doing some ink blending. So I'm going to start off on my craft mat here with some Blue Lagoon. And I'm going to go around the outer edge of this, edges of this because I did so much heat embossing. My cardstock is a little bit um, warped on the edges. And you can see I have one of these blending brushes. Now this is not um, the picket fence brush, I think it was called. This honestly is a makeup brush I bought from Shopco. <laughs> it's, I would love to have the other ones uh, just to see the difference. But when I saw the brushes come out, I just wanted to try this, see how it went. I don't normally use these because it does take a little extra work to do blending. Um, but what I did find is because my paper is a little bit warped, when I use my sponge tools to do ink blending on the edges, I noticed that the edges of the cardstock are kind of ripping my sponges. So I dug these makeup brushes out and this worked really good because they are those bristles, those brushes. It worked really well with the edges. I didn't rip up my cardstock or crinkle it. I wasn't ruining the bristles. So this did save my sponges a little bit. You know, if you have the picket fence ones, great. If you have the makeup ones, great. Whatever works for you, I will link both of them down below. Uh, whatever you prefer to try. Like I said, these are just some generic makeup brushes I picked up at the store just to see how it went. And it did work really well. I don't know a lot about the other brushes. I know there is a huge price difference um, to each their own. Uh, I did hear the bristles are different as in made out of something different. I don't know how that would affect the ink blending, but I just wanted to throw that out there. If you wanted to do a little bit more research on it, that's totally up to you. Now to switch up the colors, you can see I did come in and just wipe that down really good with a baby wipe and then dried those bristles off with a rag because I'm going to switch up my colors. Now I'm coming in with edible egg eggplant and this is a really dark purple. I'm just doing this to the very outer edge. I want it to be a gradual transition from light to dark starting from the middle. So I just wanted that dark purple purple on the very outer edge. And then you can see in between, I'm just kind of cleaning that up. So I'm not getting any extra ink in there. And then I'm coming back in with the sea glass ink. And as I was going, it wasn't giving me quite the transition that I wanted. So once I cleaned my brush off again, I'm actually going to come in with tranquil teal. And this was a really good additional color to add. It really helped blend between that edible eggplant and the sea glass ink. And so I'm just kind of bringing that out a little bit further towards the center. I still want to keep the center of that the lightest. And I think that was just a really great addition to that. Really helps keep the focus on the centerpiece of this card. Then I'm just going to come in with a rag and buff off any ink that I may have gotten on there. And for a little bit more sparkle to this, I'm going to take some Perfect Pearls and I just scoop this onto my craft mat and I'm going to spritz some water down and mix that together. And then using my paintbrush, I'm just going to flick this all over the background. You could use white paint, you could use gold Perfect Pearls, whatever you may have on hand, or even maybe some Distress Ink if you have some of that whatever your preference would be. I really liked the Perfect Pearls because it did add just a little bit more sparkle to the card. Subtle, but there. And then I will set that off on the side to dry. Now, as I'm finishing up, I have either camera gremlins or it's possible I forgot to hit the record button when I was finishing the cards. <laughs> so I'm going to have to talk you through 
a few of these. For this card to finish it off, I stamped a sentiment onto black cardstock and heat embossed with white embossing powder. And then I trimmed that down to a thin strip and added to the center of the card with some foam tape. And just for a little bit added touch, I put some jewels on there. And I did use some liquid glue to attach those. For the card where we did just the heat embossing on the one image, for the sentiment, I'm using this out of the coordinating die that came in the kit. And this is the large banner that is in there. I die cut that from black cardstock and also from white cardstock. And then I took the thanks and I centered that on the black cardstock and die cut that out. And then I added the black banner on top of the white. So that's why you're showing all white there. And then I added that with foam tape to the front and a few jewels for some more sparkle. For my last card where we just did the basic turnabout in the center, I actually used the thanks that I die cut out from the previous card and I adhered that right to the center of the card. And then I added um, an aqua shimmer pen to that and then topped it off with crystalline drops for that shine. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and taking a look at the toolkit from Concord and Ninth. And I really hope you enjoyed the inspiration I've provided. If you did, I would really appreciate a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of additional videos that I come out with. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much to Concord and Ninth, and I'll catch you next time.